Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is a mini lesson on engaging in argumentation from evidence, level four argument analysis. The icon for argumentation with evidence is two people, and that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna look at student arguments that are tied to a question, and that's the first thing you always wanna do when you're analyzing an argument, is you wanna identify, okay, what's the question that this argument is trying to answer. Next thing you look at is the structure of the argument. You wanna identify what is the claim, what is the evidence, and then what is the reasoning. And then after you've done that, and we'll do that for a couple of students, then we're gonna analyze the argument. So we're gonna analyze the argument, we're gonna go through, and what we're gonna look at is going to be the strengths and the weaknesses of the argument. And then what additional evidence could we gather that would help us determine which of these is correct. So after watching this video, you should be able to analyze arguments around things like, is sugar sweet? Or maybe, is light a wave? Or is it a particle? I'm gonna start by showing you how to analyze arguments on this question around water, and then you'll have a chance to do the same with this famous viral cat image. And so let me clean this up and then we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna look at the arguments. You can see on these arguments, the question they're trying to answer, is water wet? So we've got two arguments that are written to answer that question, student one and student two. And so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna identify what's the question that they're trying to answer. Okay, so the question they're trying to answer, is water wet? Seems kind of ludicrous and silly, but again, the reason we're doing the mini lesson is we just wanna learn how to do this practice of argument evaluation. And so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna read each of the arguments. And so as we're reading an argument, what we're looking for is a claim, evidence, and reasoning. Now, quick ways that you can find those in an argument, a claim is just gonna be an answer to the question. So once we find the answer to the question, we could just write that down. Next, we're looking for evidence. Evidence is going to be things like facts or observations or noticings that a student might have. And then the reasoning is gonna be a logical connection between these two. And so some words you might see would be like, because, or it's an apparent, or this shows. And so that's when they're using a little bit of reasoning. So we'll walk through this one really slowly. So if we start with the first one, student says, student one says, water is wet and here's why. Okay, that moment right at the beginning, you'll see this a lot of time in arguments that we can see their claim right away. So let me write that down. Okay, so for student one, water is wet. They're telling us what the claim is right away. So at the beginning, we know what their claim is. But now let's just keep going. So it says water is wet and here's why. When you touch water, you immediately feel it's wet. That's because your brain is telling, or your skin is telling your brain. So in this next little bit, we can see the evidence and we can also see the reasoning. So let me write that down. Okay, so if we look at that next bit of evidence, they're saying touching water feels wet. And then you can see they say, because your skin tells your brain, hey, this feels wet. And so that's gonna be their reasoning. And so they start with something that we notice, it's a fact. Everybody knows if you touch water, it feels wet. And then they're using reasoning to say, how does that evidence then tell us that the water is wet? And so that's kind of their logical reasoning here. Let's just keep going. So the next one says, next think about a dry sponge. If you put it in water, it becomes wet. That's because the water makes the dry sponge wet, showing that water itself is wet. So let's write out the evidence and the reasoning for that. Okay, so for the final bit of evidence and reasoning, they're saying a sponge in water becomes wet. That's their evidence. And the reasoning is water makes the sponge wet, show, showing that water is wet. And so that's that logical connection again from the evidence back to the claim. And so this is going to be our first argument for student one, water is wet. Now let's go through and do the same thing with the second one, which is water isn't wet. You could always pause the video if you wanted to and then try to do this on your own, but let me walk through this one. So even though it might seem strange, water isn't wet. So let me go through that.
When you touch water and feel it's wet, that's just how your brain understands what your skin feels. So let me just write that down. Okay, now that we've laid out the structure of both arguments, what we want to do is we want to evaluate. So we want to We've analyzed them, but now we want to evaluate the strengths, weaknesses of the argument, and then also additional evidence. And so what's nice about laying it out this way is you can look at these. I can see right here and here, I, it'd be really hard to poke holes in this evidence because it's pretty clear. So what I'm going to be looking at is the reasoning. So let me start with some strengths, weaknesses, and then we'll talk about additional evidence. So what I wrote for an evaluation is great evidence. I think this is good evidence. They're very relatable examples. I did say the reasoning too is weak. Water making things wet doesn't address the specific question, which is, is water wet? And so now that I've done that, let me go through and do the same thing for the second argument. So what I wrote for uh, this argument is the entire argument challenges the assumption that water is wet. And I think that's very original. But then as a weakness, I said the word wet is never used for water alone. So we just don't use it that way. And so I said reasoning two is weak. As we look at additional evidence, now we're looking for, if I were to give each of these students advice, what's additional evidence or what are some different things that might help them make a stronger argument? Well, I think both of them need one thing. So what I think is additional evidence that would be helpful is neither of them define what the word wet is. And that, in a good argument, is always an important first step. If I'm going to really figure out is water wet, I better know what wet is. So an example could be, if we think about student two, they could use this definition. Wet is covered with or saturated in liquid. And so then you could just say, is water covered or saturated in liquid? You could say no. And so you could say water is not wet. So that'd be a, a nice little bit of reasoning you could use. Uh, conversely, if we look on the other side, if you use this definition, having molecules that readily adhere to or surround other molecules, often creating a sensation of moisture when touched. Well, do we get that sensation of, of moisture? If we use this definition, then student one could say, yeah, water is wet as well. And so when you're looking at an argument, first identify the structure and then evaluate it. Strengths, weaknesses, and then additional evidence. What I'm going to do is clean this up and then you'll have a chance to do this on your own. Okay, for the next one, we've got a image that went around the internet for quite a bit. It's an image of a cat and uh, the big question was, is the cat going up the stairs or is the cat going down the stairs? And so for this one, I've got two student arguments, student one and student two. They're each taking opposite positions, one that the cat is going down and one is the cat is going up. So I'll link those down below. What I would encourage you to do is pause the video, then go try to do what we've just done, right? Claim evidence reasoning for each student, argue, then evaluate it based on strengths, weaknesses, and additional evidence, and then come back. And we can compare our uh, analysis. Okay, so the first thing I would do is I really want to make sure I look at the image. So we've got a cat on a staircase. There's some things that it's a little blurry, but some things that I can see. So, okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to break apart each of these arguments. And so the first thing we want to do is write down what's the question that we're trying to address. Okay, so I would say the question, is the cat going up or down? That's gonna be what we address. Um, as you read through an argument, remember what you're looking for is claims and answer, evidence is what are the observations that they are making, or what are some facts that they're bringing to bear on the argument, and then the reasoning is a logical connection. So as I read through it, I'll just stop every time I find one of these structures. So if we start with the first one. The cat in the picture is going down the stairs. You can tell because of the way the stairs are built with parts sticking out and shadows that you only see if the cat was going down. Now 
Next, another way to know is by looking at how the cat is walking. When cats go downstairs, they walk one paw at a time with their tail up and their eyes on the ground. Putting all this together, it's pretty clear that the cat is going downstairs. Okay, so the evidence they talk about for evidence two, that the cat is walking, it has one paw at a time, tail up, and the eyes are on the ground. And then its reasoning is that cats have this position going down the stairs. And so the next thing I need to do is just kind of evaluate that argument. So let me evaluate that argument, and then we'll move on. Okay, as far as the argument evaluation, what I said is a strength of this, I really like them talking about the stair structures and the shadows. I said the position of the light are very important evidence. And when it comes to weaknesses, I said reasoning too, this is how cats look going downstairs, seems weak and seems subjective. Also when they said the eyes are on the ground when the cat is walking, that word ground is biased because they're assuming that it's going downstairs. And so that's how you argue, uh, that's how you evaluate an argument. Let me do the same thing for the second argument. So as we look at this, argument two, cat in the photo is going up the stairs. Next one, the shadows on the sides of the stairs point, make it look more vertical and horizontal shadows. Don't usually occur on stairs. So the shadows on the side of the stairs point, make it look, so I think this might be a, a mistake, make it look more vertical and horizontal. Shadows don't usually occur on stairs. So I could put a comma in there as well. So let me write that down. Okay, so the evidence one is the shadows on the side of the stairs. So those would be the shadows over here. And they're saying that horizontal shadows don't occur. So that tells me it's going up the stairs. And then for evidence two, the cat is looking up, which is interesting. They're also talking about the same evidence of the position of the cat's head. And the head on cats walking down is different. So now I want to evaluate the strengths and the weaknesses of this argument and additional evidence. Okay, so as far as strengths, I said the position of the cat head seems important. Where it's looking might tell us a little bit about where it's going. I also said that reasoning one is inaccurate and reasoning two, just like reasoning two from the first argument, seems subjective. So they're just saying this is true. It's almost like saying this is evidence. And so I said additional evidence could be study the position of a cat head as it goes up or downstairs, and then also observing the cat shadows I think would be a helpful bit of evidence that would at least tell us which of these is right. So now that you've learned how to evaluate and analyze an argument with the cat, you could do the same thing. I've got some examples of student work on sugar and is sugar sweet, or you could even go physics and look at wave particle duality and evaluate those arguments. So analysis of arguments just real what you have to do is like get the structure out first and then start pulling apart each bit of the argument and find where the strengths and the weaknesses are and I hope that's helpful.